Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. This is gonna be a fun one because today we are finding out if the plug-in hybrid Range Rover makes the best 4x4 by far even better. And we're going to do this in a few different ways. We'll first start by taking the Range Rover P400E on an electric only range test. Can you actually daily drive this car without using the internal combustion engine? And then we'll see how practical and easy this car is. Does it make sense to even get the hybrid version? And of course, we'll see if we can do some off-roading in silence. We're gonna start today's adventure with the Range Rover with a range test. Now, the thing is, plug-in hybrids, you can use them in one of two ways. You can just drive it normally, the car will figure out when to charge the battery and when to kick on the internal combustion engine, or you can try and maximize the efficiency of the vehicle by charging at home. So we've full charged the Range Rover and we're gonna see how much range we can squeeze out of it. Now, EPA rates this vehicle at 19 miles for full electric only. Will we be able to beat it? Is this heavy car gonna kill the range and we'll only go five? Let's go find out. Welcome to the inside of the Range Rover. Now this is the short wheelbase, not the long wheelbase, but oh, Range Rovers are just the best. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I have a full charge on the battery right now. It's a plug-in hybrid with somewhere around 13 kilowatt hours. And we're gonna see how far we can drive on electricity alone. I mean, this is gonna be a inner city mode. We're not gonna be ripping up and down the highways. We're just gonna drive normally, air conditioning on, AC seats on, it's a warm day. The car is predicting a 25 mile range. Will we get that much? I'm not sure. Is that enough? Let's talk about that while we go. So let me unplug and we'll hit the road. Let's back up. A very clear backup camera to start. We'll twist it into drive. Oh, driving a Range Rover is for sure one of the best seating positions experiences you can get in any car. You just feel so much better than anyone on the road. Now, I imagine a lot of the people watching this video are not going to be super into Range Rovers, but I have to confess I'm a Range Rover and just general Land Rover fan. I think a lot of people love Range Rovers for the style, the showing off, they put big wheels on it. That's not why I like these cars at all. I love it that you can sit at 140 miles an hour like nothing cruising down the highway and then go climb a mountain with massaging, air conditioned seats. We have a refrigerator in the middle here. Like it's just one of those cars that can do anything. So initial impressions driving around in EV mode, it just drives normally. I haven't thought about it. It has plenty of pickup for what I've done so far. The electric motor is between the engine and the transmission. It's a ZF uh, solution here. And um, essentially the, the electric motor will have to shift gears with the gas engine, which is kind of interesting and I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I think it's sort of a compromised solution and you do feel it shift in the background. Yeah, right there, ever so slightly. But you'd have to be a really acute driver to notice those little shifts. I would say the normal person will not feel them. So the car is now predicting 24 miles of EV only range. We've driven one mile, so that adds up and makes sense. Um, we're gonna now get it up to a little bit of a higher speed road, and I'm gonna need to accelerate quite hard to get onto this road in EV only. So let's see how she does. I have this little bar that says if I go past it, it will kick on the gas, so I'm keeping it below that. Accelerates fine, we're doing 40 plus. That's impressive. I've driven other hybrids where anytime you wanna just accelerate, it kicks on the gas engine instantly, you lose all the benefits of electric. But here we're up to 50 miles an hour, cruising easily, not anywhere near the limit. This is a heavy car. This thing must put out at least 60, 70 kilowatt, it feels like. Wow. And <laughs> at speed, the first thing you notice is just the lack of sensation. It is so quiet. You are so removed from your surroundings up here. <laughs> it's really just one of the best. 
Now there's a really cool function in this car that I found uh, that will essentially prioritize the internal combustion engine and the plug-in engine or the motor uh, based off of your driving habits so or or i should say what's in the navigation system so if you're cruising into an inner city but you have a long highway stretch the car will run the four-cylinder turbocharged engine that land rovers put in all their things now and it will charge the battery and then it will shut off when you get inside city limits so you don't have emissions inside certain places so i think that's enough chat now let's cruise down the road a little bit drain this battery and then we'll talk a little more about the Range Rover. to talk about the Range Rover in terms of an electric car and then a hybrid vehicle. And as an EV, of course, it's seriously flawed if you're planning to just drive this car in electric only, which I don't think anyone buying this car is. Um, you know, it, it has limited acceleration, albeit you, I don't think you'll have many traffic situations where you'll need the gas engine to bring you up to speed. Um, but there's no fast charging. It only does, again, about 20 miles on a charge that's flawed. But let's talk about the use case for this car. It is really great if you live in an inner city environment, you are going to be cruising basically your kids to school, you to work, back to home, and you can kind of just plug it in whenever you stop the car. That means that you can pretty much drive this car daily using electricity alone, and then just use the gas engine for trips that is doable in this. Uh, and that's a really cool thing. You're saving a lot of wear and tear, less maintenance, uh, but you're really working that battery hard. Now let's talk about this car as a hybrid vehicle. I've spent some time already, and I'll, I'll share with you after our range test, driving this in just normal mode, putting it in drive, not using any of the EV functions, and then using the internal combustion engine mixed with the hybrid electric system. And it is wildly seamless. You really cannot tell when the gas engine even kicks on. The only hint of it is when you really put your foot down, you can hear the four cylinder work. So as a hybrid vehicle, it's incredible for cruising around what they can do. A little bit later, if you stick around, we will be taking this over an off-road course in electric only. And yes, you can go to low range with electric, which is wildly cool. And the last question is, would the Range Rover be better if it, was a, if it was a full electric vehicle? Like, let's say they put a 100 kilowatt hour, 125 kilowatt hour battery pack in this. Yes, the Range Rover would be a lot better than this. But I would say this is better than nothing. And after spending the day with it today, I would almost argue I would buy this drivetrain over any other Land Rover drivetrain in the full-size Range Rover because it's just so quiet and seamless and you're never driving these for speed, you're just cruising around. And here we are in silence, cruising around. <laughs> it's great, it has regen, so it's a blended system. So when I lift off, it kind of coasts, and then you touch the brake a little bit and it charges the battery. So here I'm predictively charging for this stoplight. Zero miles showing, our power does not seem to have degraded at all. Our acceleration in electric only seems to be the same. Uh, we are now at, let's take a look, our state of charge, 7% state of charge. So we are using a bit of battery. It's 85 degrees out. The AC system is working to keep us cool, but it has yet to turn on the gas. I mean, this is more range than I would have expected from this giant behemoth. I guess we'll do a couple loops around before we get back to the charging station. Wow, it's letting us drive and it shows great acceleration. Oh, engine just turned on, 67 miles. So that was 23 miles of full EV range with the heated or the cooled seat and AC on a warm day. And I did some hard accelerations. 
that's pretty good actually uh for again this is a hybrid it's not a full electric car wow 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 that's awesome um i didn't even notice the engine turned on until the engine just turned on on the screen here on my ev screen but other than that there was no indication so now that the engine's on we're in normal hybrid mode yeah you can hear it work now and that's just that is an unpremium sound See, that just kills it right there. I, I was so excited in electric mode, and it is fine when you're cruising down the highway, you don't hear it, but when you get into it, it kind of sounds like an evoke. Like it just, you bought the good one, why do you have to listen to that noise? If they put this system with the big SVR 575 horsepower V8, I would be the only person who would buy that and it's not very practical or needed, but that the noise thing, that's a downside for sure. That is a negative. So we've seen some impressive range blowing past the EPA rated range. And again, I was just driving it normally, AC seats on, air conditioned, blasting, just cruising up and down the roads, and it did 23 miles full electric. That's pretty impressive from a car this big. Now, there's a few other benefits to driving a Range Rover, such as you just get to feel better than everyone else on the road. But there is a cool thing. The newer Range Rovers now have this split tailgate that's fully electric, so you don't have to do anything. It opens and closes itself by itself. With the plug-in though, you do lose a little bit of trunk space. This lip right here comes up because you gotta put the battery somewhere, but honestly, it's not noticeable. One of the coolest parts about this car though is this case that the charger comes in, and this is a full, I believe, Windsor leather case that no other Jaguar Land Rover product gets except for the plug-in Range Rovers. And you can see here your emergency use case charger, 10 amp, nothing special that comes with the car but I'm sure the case costs about four times as much as that charger. As it breaks. <laughs> Typical Land Rover. So we've seen you give up a little bit of trunk space in the plug-in hybrid version. However, the inside is still beautifully appointed. Now this doesn't have any of the crazy rear entertainment, reclining rear seats. It does have actually, um, but it doesn't have the full like captain's chairs in the back. But like, this is a great place to spend time. You have that beautiful glass roof that I showed you. And then up front, you just have one of the best seating positions on the planet. You sit above everyone else. The seats are super comfortable. And then of course, that steering wheel with the wood option, I'm a huge fan of. That felt great in the hands. Now we have the suspension raised up here. Of course, it's a Range Rover. You can go up and down and have this crazy wheel articulation. But have you lost any of the off-road credibility with the electric system? Can you even off-road in electric alone? I think we have to test that out. So let's head over to the Land Rover local dealership where they have an off-road course here in Cary, North Carolina. We'll put this thing in low range, raise up the suspension, and send it over the course and see if it can do it. I genuinely have no idea. I think it'll be kind of interesting. There's a crazy steep gradient that it's gonna have to get up. Let's go try it out. You can see here after dialing the correct settings with the terrain response system, the Land Rover was ready to go and tackle some terrain. We first pitched the vehicle up this super steep slope and it was able to climb itself up effortlessly in electric only mode. Pretty impressive. Once the vehicle summited, the regenerative braking helped it on the way down and then it was off to the elephant steps. Here we're able to showcase the articulation of the Range Rover suspension, and it's largely unchanged from its full combustion brothers. Lastly, it's a test to get the Land Rover up on a steep sideways angle, and we ended up lifting wheels in the process. You can see the traction control and locking differentials acting quickly, getting power to the correct wheels. After this obstacle, the course was over, and not once did we use a drop of fuel. 
This is definitely the most capable vehicle that can drive over objects in electric mode only. So what were my thoughts on the Range Rover at the end of the day? Well, I'm sort of conflicted. On one hand, I'm really happy that I can now do some electrified driving with a Range Rover. That's been a dream of mine for a long time. On the other hand, I can't help but feel that this is sort of a forced compliance vehicle. I really hope that in the next generation Range Rover, Land Rover puts their best foot forward and makes a strong, compelling, electric only option. If they're able to do this, you may see me riding around in one very soon. Thanks again for watching Inside EVs. Please subscribe and we'll see you next week for the next video. We're sitting here on adaptive cruise control with the active steering going. So I don't, I mean, I'm monitoring it, but it's doing everything just fine. Uh, I'm just thinking everything doesn't matter in a Range Rover. It doesn't matter if you know, that your house is blowing up or, you know, you're having issues with your wife, you're getting a divorce, you get in your Range Rover and you're not in a rush to get anywhere.